Uh, hello, uh, we are here with like the Vancouver Art Book Fair 2021, uh, the event with Raw Material Company, uh, with the presence uh, of uh, Fatima, who came to talk in the name of this uh, Senegal Art Institution. Uh, I'll start by acknowledging that I am in Jojake, Montreal, on the unceded indigenous lands of the Ganyangahaga Mohawk Nation. Jojaki, commonly known as Montreal, is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations, and we recognize the Ganyangahaga as custodians of the lands and waters on which I am today. Raw Material Company is a center for art, knowledge, and society. It is an initiative involved with curatorial practice, artistic education, residencies, knowledge production, and archiving of theory and criticism on art. It works to foster appreciation and growth of artistic and intellectual creativity in Africa. The program is transdisciplinary and is equally informed by literature, film, architecture, politics, fashion, cuisine, and diaspora. Here well, with us is uh, Fatima Bintou Hasusi. Fatima Bintou Hasusi is a cur cultural mediator and curator with a master's degree in exhibition sciences and techniques from the Sorbonne University in Paris. After several years in public and private cultural institutions in France, she is now curator of programs at Raw Material Company. There, she develops her curatorial practice and her research on the market dynamics operating on the contemporary art scene of the continent and its diaspora. She lives and works in Dakar. Welcome, Fatima, and thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Eloisa. It's a real pleasure for us to be here with you today. And uh, I just want to say thank you to you and all your dedicated, very dedicated team uh, at that, the Vancouver Art Fair and uh, saying hello to all of them, Lisa, Sarah, Hélène, uh, and uh, all those who give a hand for making this possible and making it happen. And I'm saying also a huge thank you to the team of uh, Shimurenga, Tony, uh, Noma, Chantal, and many others that I'm, I'm forgetting that uh, give us the possibility and the opportunity to work with them on this program. Yeah, I would like to also say to the audience that Shimurenga is also uh, going to have a presentation. Uh, during the yeah. there so yes yeah, stay tuned and and watch that too <laughs> uh, <laughs> like yeah, you, if you uh, want to start sharing your, your screen and, and you can go ahead whenever you want Fatima. perfect so here it is do you have it Yes, I can see it. It's okay. Perfect. So uh, we are really happy to be here with you today. So I'm going to start this uh, presentation with um, a focus on uh, raw participation and uh, how we want to point out the publishing work we are doing and how this publishing work it became seemingly finally it was a tool at the beginning and finally it became a form of curatorial practice in itself and uh, for this conversation we want to bring uh, in the conversation of course the work that the uh, pan-african platform shimoranga is doing uh, in south africa in africa and all around the world and uh, we share their commitment their vision and their struggle and we are really happy to be to have the opportunity to share uh, what we have done all together since then. So um, I'm going to start with a short presentation introduction of uh, our context. Uh, you can see in the screen those um, images from a book of the uh, first festival of uh, Negro art in Africa, taking place in Dakar in uh, 19... 
66 and uh, organized and run by President Leopold Sedar Senghor. And when it comes to talk about raw material company, it's really important to focus and to talk about this part of our history because without all those different uh, infrastructure, buildings, and all these cultural policy developed by President Leopold Sedar Senghor at this specific period of time, there won't, the, the, our organization won't settle in Dakar. So what we have to know is that the former President Leopold Sedar Senghor was also a poet and a writer, and he uh, built and he developed alongside uh, uh, Aimé Césaire, a movement called Negritude, in which they truly think that for people um, belonging to African or just uh, or Black communities, it was really important to be able to celebrate ourselves and celebrate our culture, and through this culture, through uh, our own identity, find a way to be in this world without being submitted to any kind of oppression or any kind of uh, of uh, hegemony. So when President Leopold Sedar Senghor take the power in Senegal uh, after the independence, one of his first goals was to build different kind of cultural infrastructure that can help and help him and his relative developing this idea of having a kind of black identity and culture that we can celebrate in all the different fields uh, consider as academic art field, like uh, he created a school, a national school of art, he developed a national theater, he developed a national dance company with uh, many, many different art practitioners that was from the continent that he sent abroad in order to be formed and so that they can come back and develop in the continent and specifically in Senegal what they were doing. In this very idea, he created the National School of Art in 1960, the um, tapestry manufacturer in 1965, and those institutions are still existing, struggling, but still existing. And among the different kind of infrastructure he created, he developed with uh, the publishing house Présence Africaine, a program, so a big festival called First World Festival of Negro Art in 1966. And this, important moment of our history uh, finds Senegal uh, welcoming a huge amount of people coming from all over the world, being Black or belonging to the African diaspora or belonging to those different, to those very important community. So we think that we gather something like 2,000, uh, 2,500 people from all over, all over the world, 30 African countries, uh, people coming from USA, IT, Trinidad and Tobago, UK, France, or Brazil, even Brazil, and people coming from the continent, of course, Nigeria and all the different country. And the people coming also from different kind of colonized, uh, um, co colonized uh, leadership, like, um, um, English speaking African, but also uh, Lusophone speaking African and uh, French speaking African. So it was a very big celebration, the first of its kind on the continent. And uh, it was the first one organized on the continent. And until now, uh, Senegal, Senegal is uh, having report, um, Senegal have a lot of. Uh, repercussion, but very positive repercussion connected to that specific event. But one other thing that happened at this specific moment of time, I think that the first, the first World Festival of Negro Art gave birth as well, in connection, of course, with Nigeria. But uh, Nigeria developed its own festival in 1977 called Festac. And it is a very important moment of history that people know, but they don't sometimes know how important this event was and the impact that this event had on the African diaspora in itself. You have two tendencies during this period. In 1966, President Leopold Sedar Senghor was, of course, a very, very important figure 
on the art scene in the continent, but he was too attached to the colonial model. And somehow his idea of civilization or being educated or being uh, a, a perfect artist, a perfect painter, a good writer and a good dramaturg was connected and closely, closely developed in the frame of what the colonizer live with us. So you have many kind of um, differences and uh, ideas of what it means to be black and what it means to celebrate your blackness in the continent at a specific moment of time. And the first stack of 77 was of course in the continuity of the first man of 1966, but the tone was different. The idea was different. And there was also a very, very important uh, place for glorifying what we are beyond what the colonizer want us to be and how the colonizer want us to interact with the art field or different kind of cultural ideas we can have. So this book uh, created, uh, organized and published and developed and all the work that Chimurenga made on this book is very important because it gives us a bunch, an amazing bunch of resources, archives, photographical materials, even archives that people don't even have never seen on this specific moment of history, but also all the newspapers, the comment they have on the different stage of this very important moment in Nigeria mm -hmm. and how it impacts the population there and the um, trust it leaves on the population after uh, the event took place in 1977. So it was the second World Black and African Festival of Art and Culture. There was Emissaire from Senegal send to uh, Nigeria in order to help in a certain way or to guide them on how to organize this event, but of course they know how to do it. And the idea bring by President Leopold Sedar Sangor and the core of uh, the organizational committee of the first festival uh, was very different of what uh, people want to do in Nigeria. But still, it was an amazing celebration and still it was a very important moment of uh, being together and finding a way to know each other. Because one thing that people used to forget is that even if we share a continent, even if we share a land, we don't share identities, we are not the same. So we are not from the same ethnical group. We don't, have, we don't share sometimes the same belief. We don't share everything. People think that Africa is a big thing and everybody is talking together and it's not working like that. And of course, uh, the colonization, how it works in Nigeria or in Angola or in South Africa or in Senegal was completely different. So the relationship as well we have together was different. So we have to learn how to know each other again, how to be together again, and how to celebrate each identity, not only a kind of identity, not only a kind of cultural group, but also all of us and finding a way to know all of us. Yeah. And you can see in the image, you have also an affiche of the, um, how they say, a poster of the festival that took place in Alger after that. And it's really important because, uh, you know, those three festivals, even if among those two festivals you have two uh, organized by former French colonies country, have a complete different tone depending on when it took place in Dakar, in Nigeria, or in Alger. And it's all about which kind of political figures was at the front and also which kind of situations the country was in. In, for example, when FaceTag took place, Nigeria was at the top of all this oil explosion and the discovering of petrol and everything. So there was also a lot of money and a lot of uh, means in order to make this celebration as huge as it was. So I think that this book is really, really important in order to having a wide perspective on what those different festivals created, who they bring together, who write and which kind of, uh, which whom were involved in the different festival. You have many intellectuals that have, contrib have contributed to the different Three, the, three, the three festival, but you have also people who are really more connected to the Festac or the 
festival of Alger. So uh, I'm just sending a shout out on this specific book and the role collaborate, but uh, in a very, very different way. And uh, we are just here as a helping hand but they did the whole work. It was amazing. And we launched, there was different kind of launch of the book. And one of them took place at Rho in uh, 2020, February 2020. And it was a very beautiful moment of celebration. And Tony, yeah. if people want to find this so, book, right. if people want to find this book, they can find it on your website. They can find it on the platform of uh, the Vancouver Art Book Fair. There is a direct link on uh, the distributor. So you have a distributor from Europe and also a Shimuranga platform store. So we have three books of Shimuranga on our uh, virtual table book. And Festac is one of the, the, those books. OK, great. Right. Do and those festivals the... still happen? Uh, and, and... In Senegal, no. and, and, and in fact, the festival took place in Senegal again in 2009. But it was a kind, it was a way for President Abdoulaye Wad this time, the third president of Senegal, to reconvoke a period of our history that he. He was here, of course, because Abdullah Wad was also in the picture with of the first congress, first congress of. Um, African writers and cultural members, you know, the one who that, that took place uh, at Roma, but also at La Sorbonne in Paris in 1959. So he was here and he knows all this history. He was really young, the former president of Senegal when this took place. And in a certain way, when he take the power, um, a few years ago in the uh, 2000s, he decided to in a certain way, fulfill President Leopold Sedar Senghor goal. Because between uh, 1960, where President Se Se Leopold Sedar Senghor take the power, and 1980, he built a lot of cultural infrastructure. But after 1980, he left the power. And then we have this uh, crisis of structural adjustment that bring us and led us to completely abandon all our cultural, educational, and health infrastructure in order to put all our money in um, project and uh, specific term that the FME think was the good one for African country and West African country in particular. Okay. So at this period of time, many, many, many infrastructure was just were just abandoned and nothing happened so for a very long period you have no very important cultural event except the Dakar Biennale that took place in 1991 and then 1992 and since then the Dakar Biennale is still running in Senegal it was an idea of President Leopold Sedar Senghor fulfilled by President Abdou Diouf but still uh, the festival the first man was not reconvoked and President Abdullah decided to do so, but he did it in a specific manner that bring a lot of people in Dakar, but with no electricity in the in people's house and just have the whole elect all the whole power in a specific place in Dakar and lighting a scene with very important uh, hip-hop singer and very important also uh, players and musicians and he tried to do so but it was not working because people were starving they have no electricity yeah. they have no water people were struggling so it doesn't get the same impact on people yeah. and since then it's not we never reconvoke this festival yeah. and it's uh, yes it's a pity but the biennale is a is, is a great way for us also to celebrate uh, the diversity of the contemporary african art scene mm -hmm. let's go to the next one so here you have uh, the front, uh, the facade of Raw Material Company. So Raw Material Company is uh, art for, uh, uh, how do you say, Center for Art, Knowledge and Company. And uh, all these dynamics and all that happened in Senegal between 1960 and our days really put uh, Dakar in a kind of, as a focus point, 
point on the African continent as an art scene, you know? People are coming from the Vienna, people have remembrance of the Festman, people know that the art scene here is very, how do you say, developed. And uh, many people are still nostalgic of this period that are coming in Dakar in order to face and to be in conversation with this very art scene they have memories of. But when Koyo come into Dakar for the, very, the same reason, she find out that there was a lack of critical discourse. In all we were talking about the, the different organization or infrastructure that President Leopold developed, all the different uh, project that was running in Senegal, but we were not able or there was no place in order to build or to write in about this history or to write about this art history in the making and to be able to gather the resources, the archives and the document connected to all these different moments of our history. Everything was just all over the place and people, when you need something regarding the first man, you go to the archive, but something is missing and something, everything was just completely dismantled and uh, she find a necessity to create a space where people can come in Dakar, come find resources, can discuss and can argue about this very uh, thing called the contemporary African art scene and its diaspora and being able also to think beyond our history, not just being here and talking about what Sangor did and what is how Senegal is going all over the place and nothing is working, but thinking about how we can build things and how we can be able to pass this period of time and create something new or develop from what we have, something that can meet with us, not something that we give to us, but something that is connected to what we are and what we want to share and what we, we are as individuals, but also as a bigger community. So Senegal has this very dynamic art scene. And this is the reason why uh, Koyo think that uh, she should open raw material company in Dakar. The Biennale was still running. She come in Dakar in 1995, if I remember correctly. And uh, in 2008, she was thinking about creating a space like Raw Material Company, but the physical space opened in 2001. Mm -hmm. So when we think about Raw, we think that Raw born out of the necessity to create a space for sharing knowledge, of course, but a place that can provide people access to contemporary artistic theory and uh, also create a page that can generate a discourse, ideas and practice and do it, it independently from the public founding or control. Because we still have in this, in our area, uh, cultural infrastructure, but they are truly attached to the government. Okay. Because since the beginning, is it like that? And so there was no real private institution being here and just thinking about, okay, they say that, we do that, but finally, what is the right thing or what is the right thing to do or how we can develop what we are doing and how, how can we do it properly? So I think in a certain way, Ro born at this period of time because it was necessary to have a place like that in Dakar at this moment. And so we call Bro Center for Art, Knowledge and Society because we truly know that, we truly think that we can't have an interest in the art scene without having an interest in the knowledge and educational system and without interest on the very society for which we are working and the society with where, where Ro is implanted. So all this is completely connected and for Ro to be, we, have, we need to have people with us and growing and uh, having a certain kind of maturity with us all together, not just us teaching them something, but learning from them as well. Okay. And uh, for that, uh, we have as well, we have developed in a row uh, different kind of uh, structure and places and um, yes, that. Even those 
what we want to share around the curatorial practice because Koyo is an artist and creator. So she has a curatorial practice and this curatorial practice is at the core of what she is doing. So one of the most important things was to see how this curatorial practice can inform a context, not just being a creator, like you are a creator all over the place, but being a creator for your context and being able to share what the context needed really. So one of the things we have developed was the library. It was since the beginning, the essence of Ro, and it was also since the beginning, the first connection link or whatever you can imagine with our population and the locals because people come because there is wi-fi people come because they can find resources people come because they can have quite place to work and finally you ended up with people from the art field because it's a library uh, focused on the contemporary art scene and all its demember uh, all its parts you know so visual art theater, literature, and whatever you can imagine. But we have finally uh, in bring into the library uh, books that inform uh, economy, politics, history of politics, history of struggle, history or sonar resources. We have a lot of sound that we collected and that people just leave at the library because they know that we will be able to share it. And so we have resources and computer people can come sit and listen to whatever they want and just share uh, with us their concern about the society or how they want to do things and how they want to evolve. It could be for art practitioners, but it could be as well for people who are not at all connected to art. And we have not noticed that since the pandemic, most of the people who came at the library are students coming from business school or students that's coming from uh, uh, science politics or people coming from the National School of Administration. So sometimes it's a bit weird for us, but we are really happy to have them here because yeah. they make this place alive. And it's a way for us as well to share our passion. Yeah, it seems that is like one of the main connections that you have with the com com community at large. Um, because people feel uh, yes. sort of like uh, not intimidated by the library space as they maybe would with the gallery space or with like a performance space. The library, the library is that feel feels part of like just normal life, not some sort of like hard yes. space, right? Yeah, 100%. And you ha we have many people who come just and say, okay, I have this exam, but it's on Zoom. I need the Wi-Fi. Can I come? Yes, of course. <laughs> and you have this kind of question, very normal thing. And yeah. people are just like, okay, so the fact that we are not centered is and doesn't really interest you. No, we are not like that because we know that we have also people... Students here can struggle for very, very basic things. And we know that it's part of our mission. And it's so it's also important for us to have those students or those people in the place because we are informed thanks to what those people coming at row, we are informed about what is happening in the society, yeah. not in the society of the art field, but in the society. Yeah. The people we are working with are amazing people and we love them. But sometimes the art field, you can feel a bit disconnected to what is really happening. Mm -hmm. And in order to not be that place where people just come to have, a, how do you say that? When we have a preview, people are coming just to say, I was at room for the preview of this exhibition. Then we need also the students, all those people coming just from normal life to come and to be part of our normal life. So finally, Ro is becoming a kind of normal place to go just to walk or to have a coffee or to learn something or to see a film. And a lot of those students ended up taking part in our public program. And I'm going to talk about that very soon because public program are all, also a very important part of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So here you can see the different kind of posters, of, the different poster of exhibition that we host at RO. Uh, exhibition is a very important part of what we are doing because most of us are creators and we are really interested in the way we can share artists 
practice through uh, the curatorial practice. But still, we understand at the beginning, you know, Ro was organizing and developing many, many, many exhibitions. When Ro opened in 2011, we were in the rhythm of something like six, seven exhibitions a year, so nonstop. And the, the, the team was really small and they were doing exhibition on the top of exhibition, on the top of exhibition, wanting to acknowledge the work of many artists they want to support it, wanting to share also the, the, the work of those artists and being a platform from the artists. When Row Open, everybody was just like, okay, can I show something here? Can I, can I, can I? And it was important as well for us to be able to accompany all this art scene but we very quickly find out that it was not the good answer for us in fact in our context doing this amount of exhibition without sharing anything just putting paintings or pictures or whatever you want on walls and having a kind of manifesto for the exhibition doesn't create a conversation with your people at all mm. at least they will feel intimidated and uh, or they won't come at all so in 2014 Roe faces different kind of challenges and for in about the infrastructure was challenged economically uh, socially and also about what we were doing so Koyo and the team they decided to take a sabbatical they take a sabbatical of one year uh, in order to go and stay together and rethink the concept of row, what they want to share, how they want to share it, with who they want to share it, and how important it was or not to do so. To do so, so we finally understand that the creatorial practice can't be seen beyond being just creating exhibition and developing exhibition, but the curatorial practice, what is part of the curatorial practice is also running a public program when the public program is an answer, mm -hmm. running a publication when the publication is the answer and not thinking that the only kind of answer we have is an exhibition and doing an exhibition. So we start thinking all our program through that gaze, thinking, okay, who is my audience? How do, what did I want them to know? What did I want to share? Did I want to share something? Did I want to learn something from them? And how many things we can bring together so that we can be stronger together? I'm sorry, it's so vieux, <laughs> but it was, it's, it's really about that being all together and doing this all together. Not only being us in our space, doing whatever we want to do and thinking that everybody is going to follow that. So of course, exhibition was really important for us, but we find out also, but sometimes the exhibition is not the relevant answer for what we are doing and how we want to share it and with whom we want to share it. And so we have, of course, we say the library, we have uh, this exhibition space, amazing exhibition space, but we have also a residency program. And since the beginning, like the exhibitions, uh, Row developed, create a place where they can host international artists, but also local artists. Local artists come very, very uh, more recently. It was, first of all, international artists or hosting some local artists we have acquaintance with, depending on if they need room for a few weeks in order to think about what they were doing, et cetera, et cetera. So we have this amazing house called Ker Issa, named after Issa Sam, a very important uh, cultural figure here in Senegal. And in Ker Issa, we host uh, various nationalities and uh, it was a um, residency program think, thought in order to host visual artists, but also musicians, uh, architects, creators, researchers. And the idea was to host only people that can engage with our context. So it's not vacation, it's not holidays. It's when you applied for the residency program at home, we have to be sure that we can put you in connection with someone and people in our context that can inform your practice. Mm -hmm in various different ways, but it's really important to be sure that you come here and you are able to develop your practice or your work, not being just here to be here and to visit. 
the car like it can happen sometimes but for we we never face that thanks 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 but we never face that but it was really important for us to 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 have people understanding that uh, it's it's not that easy it's a chance as well to be able to meet our context to be in Senegal it's a luxury as well in a certain way and so we are here to create the infrastructure and to develop uh, the, 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 the tools in order to make you as comfortable as possible but also to give you the more connection uh, you need in order to fulfill your work or your practice so we work like that since the beginning and when the pandemic happened we decided to change a bit the system and to integrate local artists in order to help them because they were struggling of course because of the COVID-19 and we managed to find budget in order to have them in-house for two months and produce the work, produce the exhibition, and also being with them beyond the moment of the residence. There is the exhibition, the public programs, the publication, but we find a way also to make connection for them with all the cultural center, all the art practitioner that can be a kind of relay to Ro. So mm -hmm. when Ro is done, and Ro is never done because we keep in touch and we are, very close to people that we host, we find a way to give you a kind of door so that you can continue working and not having just a residency one time and nothing for four years as it could happen. Sort of become a member of and the, the you sort of become a member all? of the institution, you become part of, of the family. <laughs> of course, and it's truly really important. We have a kind of raw family and we are always thinking about that and we are always laughing when people say that, but it's true. It's a kind of family. Sometimes you have residents just calling and saying, okay, I'm in Dakar for another resident, but I need just a room for one week. Can I come? And then you're just like, oh, of course, come. And then we have lunch together and then we have dinner together. So it's, a really, it's really a family. And we are also really aware that the fact that we host this kind of residency help us also elevate our art field in a certain way. By elevate, I mean uh, international artists when they come and they are connected to local artists or they are connected to local researchers and writers, they give them a new scope also in their own research practice, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course, they have, they, they, they take something from here, but we take something from them as well. Mm -hmm. And we create a conversation. Since uh, until now, we have many residents who are still coming to the car in order to see or to remit because they are still working with the people they were connected when they come from the residency. Mm. So it's important for us to create this kind of conversation and link and to maintain them and to nurture them so that the link is not interrupted. Okay. And uh, so the residency program is a very important part of what we are doing, but we have also this program called Fridays at Row, which is a series of discursive program that we organize every Friday in a specific period of the year, two times a year usually. And we have several uh, moment of discussion and Fridays at Row start from the beginning, 2011. And it's with the library the other way we have to be sure that we have our people in, 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 in the house. So we have Vox Artists, which is a panel where we talk about the artistic practice and we host um, uh, artists, but also uh, different kind of art creative. It could be fashion design, it could be artists, it could be, uh, it could be photographers, it could be uh, filmmakers. The thing is, give them a space to share what they are doing. And so that we have people who come, for example, for Parlons Senegalaiserie, will come also for Vox artist and start engaging with the artistic practice. But something like Let's Speak Senegalese, the Parlons Senegalaiserie, is a program where we only engage with the question of our our society, like what is in the actuality, what is at the front page of the, the newspaper today, what is happening, why is it such a subject, how people are reacting to this subject. Okay, so we need to have a discussion about that. And then we have a lot of debate and conversation around all this. And then we have the Cine Club, where we take the pulse of the Senegalese 
uh, film scene and film production scene because we have a big history about uh, about on, on cinema as well and uh, it's a way to acknowledge the work and the legacy of people like Usman Samben, Djibril Djok Mambeti, etc, etc. And the last program is the Theology and it's a reflection uh, on centered on architecture and urbanistic practice. So we have those public program and for example during uh, we have those different public program and for example during the biennale of 2018 ro host a public program host an exhibition and developed an exhibition called uh, the revolution will come in a form we cannot yet imagine and this exhibition was engaging with a different form of struggles and fight faced by the population in different moments of our history. In uh, 1968, when there was a kind of May Sosan treat in Paris, for example, there was one in Senegal and in other countries as well. Uh, there was this riot from the students in 1988. There was also um, uh, in 2012, a riot of the population because President Abdullah Wad, to, 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 to talk about him, uh, was trying to, to, to just uh, uh, to, to create a precedent on our legacy and our, on our constitution and find a way to stay at, in the power, for example, and to have his son just succeeding to him. And people just say that this won't happen. So we developed a uh, um, couple of exhibitions under this uh, chapeau. So uh, the revolution will come in a form we cannot imagine. And during this different kind of exhibition, we create public program. And at this moment, Shimoranga was launching uh, this magazine. So Shimoranga Chronique, the invention of Zimbabwe. And uh, with the Shimoranga Chronique, there was a supplement uh, engaging with the practice and the work of Cheikh uh, Antajo, uh, our a very important figure in Senegal and also a kind of a very important opponent to, to former President Leopold Sedar Senghor, but an amazing figure and his legacy in terms of books and writings is so big. And uh, Shimurenga did this work called Hibarut, is this um, publication called Hibaruteriyi, where uh, he take Again, the how to say the, the 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 cover rework. In fact, the cover of the first issue of this uh, periodic called Tahao, created by Sheikh Anta Job in 1977, and which was the official voice of his party, the RND. And uh, at this moment, uh, Tahao was uh, created, but uh, at this period, Tahao was initially titled Siggi. Siggi means uh, rise. And uh, President Leopold Sedar Senghor has a kind of censorship at this moment in order to just dismiss his opponent. And he created a kind of grammar police. So we know that he was a writer and a poet. So he was very picky on those things. And he created a kind of direction de l'orthographe, orthographe direction. And uh, those people were here to say, okay, you can't publish because it's not correctly written or correctly orthographed or correctly la 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 and Sheikh uh, Antadio decided to rena rename the publication uh, Tahao so Tahao is standing instead of just rising and it was uh, great because this kind of publication have a very very important impact in how people are reflecting now on how to face a government and how to be able to uh, engage with the political uh, discourse or to be able to fight different kind of uh, injustice and uh, sorry, uh, political injustice and uh, we have those resources on our, our uh, on the, in the raw base and it helped a lot when it comes to talk about Senegal history policy. So the work that uh, Shimuranga did for this book, for this uh, periodic was really important because it gave us, it, it, 
it, he point out one thing, what can African writer, what African writer can learn from Sheikh Antajo. And so all the magazines is reflecting on that and bringing also convoking uh, parole and ideas from different kinds of writers and philosophers on the very practice of uh, of uh, Sheikh Job and the leg he gave to our population and how our communities. Mm -hmm. So Hibaru Tereyi, we have their writings for people. You know, you see Tahao here in the screen now. Uh, Tahao was the um, publication of Sheikh Job, renamed in 1977. And the first publication was named Sigi before that. And uh, yes, yeah, so here you have a bunch of picture of Sheikh Job uh, newspapers, but also the Carbon 14 laboratory where he used to work and him working uh, as a chemist in this laboratory. He's an amazing figure and the work that uh, Shimorenga did uh, with this publication and uh, this chronique is still really on demand here in Dakar. We have many exemplars of this here and people are really asking for this uh, kind of resources because it's part of our history. It's a kind of legacy. Most of the people don't know that this exists because they were not here at this specific period of time. And usually the young generation, I'm not the old woman saying the young generation, but I mean, usually people think when they start a struggle that they start from craft because mm -hmm. when you go to the archive, it's very complicated to dig into the archive. So what we have done here is to create a kind of program we call Reading Room where we have all those resources accessible and people can come see what is happening, how it is happening and when it does happen and how they can reflect on uh, this very part of their history in order to be able to face the regime now. Okay. And uh, the work that Shimranga is doing is really connected in that way to what Ro is trying to do, gathering resource, information, knowledge, and all those different kinds of accessible archive that we have, but we don't know that we have them or we are not aware that they are just next door. So we have to go and to find them and we have to go and to be able to research them, yes, of course. Okay. Just a so, little note I'm, about uh, Fatima, just a little note about time. I think we have maybe 15 or 20 minutes left. So I'm doing so that, it as quickly as possible. <laughs> so, no, no, no. <laughs> so, so about to speaking about uh, collecting, documenting, and archiving, mm -hmm. uh, Ro developed since the beginning, in fact, the symposium started in 2012, uh, a condition report. So a Biennale symposium aiming at uh, creating a moment of share and study on different aspects of the artistic practice on the continent and uh, in uh, in, in the diaspora. So the first condition report was on uh, the creation of institution uh, of art in Africa or art institution in Africa. It took place in 2012. And one of the book we present at the fair, I'm gonna show it right after that, is on uh, is, uh, the book of this symposium. And we have also the symposium do so on the formation of uh, artists on the continent Continent and the symposium on art history in Africa in 2018. And the last one was stepping out of line, art collective and transfer culturalism, uh, informing our relationship with a bigger, a big network called Arts Collaboratory, where you have many, many institutions coming from what we call the global south. And uh, those institutions are working out of the line or uh, in the best possible ways to give their audience what they think they need. And this institution, we are working with them and Arts Collaboratory is an amazing network. Ro is part of it from a very, very long time now. And it helped us a lot in terms of sharing resources, sharing knowledge, sharing, uh, yes, resources, knowledge, and also community, you know, community focused organization where you can work all together and everybody is just here for the, the other one and you can lay on them when something is happening. And yes, so 
this last condition report it focused on that it took place during the Dhaka Art Summit in Bangladesh and uh, there is a publish a publication that will come out of it okay. since the beginning every condition report need to have a publication because we are it's condition those condition report were made to document everything or document the different thematic we are engaging with so it was really important for rope to make those publications available and to make those publications also accessible. So to create or to develop them, most of the time, RAW is connected or linked to an institution or uh, uh, an institution, it could be the Good Institute, for example, for this condition report, but it could also be a, a publishing house in Europe that can help to bring and to raise whatever we need in order to make this book happen. But this creates also a situation where you don't have a complete uh, hand on what you are doing on, on, on your publications. So, for example, this condition report, we don't have it anymore here, but it's still available in Europe. Hmm. Okay. And you don't have the hand on republishing it as often as you want it. You don't have the hand on how the circuit is made in order to make it having access to this place, having access to this place, having access to this place. So those, we have a lot of publications that we loved and that we really want to share and that we think that at this specific period of time, it's really important for people to have access to them because there is so many contribution from people of different kind of um, uh, uh, areas informing the contemporary African art scene, no matter if they are from the diaspora or in the continent or out of the continent. And uh, it's really important to have access to those books. So we have this work where we deliver the book we are publishing with uh, the help of collectors, for example, in uh, libraries in Senegal, but not yet out of Senegal. When we go in different kind of event, residency, exchange, we bring our books so that we have as much books as possible in different kind of area. But still the struggle is when the book is finished, how do you have to, how do you do to read it, the book? How do you do to being able to say, okay, I have the money, I'm just doing it. Not being tight by who you did the collaboration with or no. Mm -hmm. So this condition report is very important because this was also one of the first one, and uh, it is the first one, but also what was pointed out in this symposium was uh, the role changing of art institution in the continent specifically, because many of the country of the continent have art institution run by the government or created by the government or depending of the government. And at this moment in 2012, many, many, art institutions were opening in the continent, being privately run by uh, curators, researchers, art historians coming from the continent that study out of the continent or come back or what that was in the continent from the very beginning and never left. And all those different initiatives are in a certain way put together in that book. So when the symposium happened, people are coming from all over the place in order to work with us on this and to inform what we are doing and how we are doing it. One of the other publication we developed was on art history in Africa, the condition report of 2018. And it's a very important book because uh, for a very, very long time, we suffer a lot uh, of, uh, how the topic of art history or how the contemporary African art scene was informed by other people than the people who were making it. So you can stay in many, many amphitheaters around the world and having people who are not in the continent 
not knowing how the art scene is made, how it is built, who are the people who are doing the thing, just talking about that, writing about that, creating exhibition about that, and sharing the same bunch of artists from place to place, sending them from place to place and deciding that this is contemporary African art history and you guys have nothing to say about it. So on art history in Africa was a very, very big shout out, but also a very, very big moment for us to say, okay, so these are the people who are working on this field. These are the institution created on the continent and working on the continent with the artists from the continent. Even if you have artists from the diaspora, it's not exclusive, but still these people are part of it and they have their word to say. And this is not happening since 2018. This happened before 1990, uh, 1960. So it's not about being colonized and having an education on art or being colonized and being aware of a kind of aesthetic or cultural appartenance. It's about just giving us the opportunity to say what we have and who we are and not being just here to listen you saying and talking about it. So it was a very important moment because we have people coming from, of course, uh, different, we have, how do you say, um, researchers coming from different university, of course, from Europe, of course, from United States, of course, from Ethiopia, South Africa, Senegal, Nigeria, Barbad, or whatever. So it was really important also to be able to bring into the conversation aesthetic that were not acknowledged as part of the contemporary African art field, but aesthetic that were just in the margins. So it was, and you have many, many people working for so many years, for example, Elizabeth Georges or Salah Hassan creating review and magazines on this very topic since the eighties and having done an amazing bunch of work, but not being recognized because they didn't fit into the canon developed and decided by other people who are not even connected or linked to the thing. So it's it was really interesting for us to have this uh, uh, publication and and to be able also to invite and to create a conversation with different kind of uh, practitioners, but that we were not connected to not as connected to that we think or that were really far from us in our idea and finally they were really close. So here you can see the other publication we have done. Um, uh, uh, among those publications I'm going to talk about in Bibliotheque Ideal, the green one on the left top hand of the screen, I think we say that in English, I'm not sure. Yes, we and can then see, we can see your, your, your uh, uh, Okay, your, so uh, in Bibliotheque yeah. Ideal, <laughs> in Bibliothèque Ideal was the first book. And uh, you know, Koyo sent an email to her colleagues and asked them if they were about to create a kind of uh, ideal bibliography for an art practitioner, student, or someone engaging with the art scene or the art practice, what it will be. And everybody answered. Okay. And some of them sent books. That sounds fascinating. Mm -hmm. They still have this book available and in, in the, in the... No, <laughs> it was the first one. We only have three and we are just, just you know, when you come in the office, you, you have to go yeah. and to find for them. Because I'll have to go. There. I'll have to go to and take a look. It, yes, but it's an amazing book because people just answer with a lot of generosity and you understand that depending of where you were raised or where you were learning art history, the conversation was completely different. And so it's an exhaustive ideal library, but it's, I think that uh, we should put this online so that people can see it as well. But uh, it's an amazing book, yes. And people send books, many people send books. And this is in the, the library start with Koyo's books, but these come to feed the library in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And among those books, you have Chronic d'une Revolte, so about the struggle we were talking on 2012. You have also uh, The Revolution Will Come uh, in a Form We Cannot Imagine, and World World War, the book on uh, 
late uh, Issa Samb, Joachim, uh, Issa Samb legacy, this artist that we work with and who is a kind of uh, spiritual father for us at Roe and who was one of the opponent of President Leopold Sedar Sangor in the way he was thinking about the cultural policy. So I'm almost done. <laughs> You can see here all the books that we have created. So an art history is here. And Ibrahim Atam is the first artist we host as a local resident for two months at Ro last year. And uh, we are still working with him. And he is about to go in a residence in an amazing institution in Scotland called Cove Park. And uh, Ibrahim is a great photographer and now he got a gallery and everything so we are really happy for him but uh, now we are hosting new residency at row and we're gonna go with this resident local residency program every year if we have the means to do so so here i'm just uh several uh, just uh, going through uh, what we call the royal academy and just to say that the Royal Academy is what came out of this sabbatical of Ro in 2014. And the Royal Academy is an experiential uh, residential program for research and also study of artistic practice. And uh, the Royal Academy was developed, the first one took place in 2017 and 16 with Rasha Salti, but it was an amazing way for us to think about a program that can be an answer to what is happening in our context. Create a kind of non-school where people can come, learn from, uh, learn from uh, each other with, in order to, and trying to avoid a kind of hierarchy, hierarchy in the knowledge. You know, so when you come at Ro Academy, the director is chosen by the the team, uh, of the curatorial team of Ro, someone which is from our, or whom is from our context, or who we used to work with, or who is part of our network. So we decide for the director, and then the director with the Ro team is thinking about the faculty. But the faculty could be a hip hop singer. The faculty could be. Uh, someone who is working on the land. The faculty could be uh, uh, someone who is working in the community in order to make street cleaner. So those different people are not, it could be people who got PhD as well, but it depends. It depends of how the academy or how the session of the academy is made and what is needed from the session of the academy. And then there is an application and we have, we selected the, what we call the fellow, so the people who will come to learn from the faculty and the director, and also who will teach the faculty and the director from their own perspective. So it's a kind of big conversation where everybody can inform each other about what they are doing, how they are doing it, and create a kind of, uh, yes, a kind of conversation that can be fulfilled. So it's a kind of residency, but it's a different way because it takes uh, seven weeks. We have 10 participants. Uh, usually we have eight, to ten, uh, eight faculty and one director. And everything took place in Dakar. The next academy called Infrastructure will took place normally because of COVID-19 in Philadelphia. It is the first time that the academy will took place out of Dakar. And uh, it's an invitation from the ICA, but it's a big challenge for us. And among the people we received for the academy, we have received uh, Tony from Shimurenga for the session two of the academy. So uh, it was, in 2017 and uh, I think in a certain way in the book of uh, we call Breathing Out of School, the book of the academy, um, Frida has this amazing, Frida robles Pons have this amazing contribution of uh, about uh, what it means to be or to build this kind of conversation. And I hope you will have the opportunity to read it. I don't have enough time to, do, to, to have a lecture of uh, her text, but it, it is an amazing way to acknowledge how the academy, uh, specifically um, the Angazi, but I'm sure one, uh, create a space where 
people just understand that there is different way to seek for knowledge and there is also different ways to stretch the boundaries on what we are doing and how we are seeking for knowledge and uh, it was an academy where people just rethink the way they learn or they self experience the world and uh, they try everything and they we've been in different kind of place and they listen to music and discuss and engage also with different kind of workers and researchers who were connected in different ways to the knowledge not the, the academical one but rethinking the way in which the academic knowledge is shared. For example, there was Professor Boubacar Boris Job, there was also this moment with Felwin, and Boubacar Boris Job is an amazing person because he's trying to create a kind of uh, ecosystem where people can learn, read, and write in Wolof, so a vernacular language in Senegal, in order to earn a kind of self-esteem or also possess our language because we are always about fighting or or just being against the language of the colonizer but still we are not able to write and to read and to sometimes speak in our vernacular language so in order to have to develop a kind of administration writing on in Wolof, people need to learn how to read it, need to use to hear it. And um, Boubacar Boris Diop is one of those people uh, like today who are trying to develop or create different ways to build new knowledge and, and new identities as well and new histories. And it's, I think it is important. So I think that I have uh, just I've been through different kind of uh, slide and presentation. Here you have an, an image of uh, the the Row Academy of Tony, and uh, the Row Academy of Tony was called Angazi, but I'm sure, and it's a South African expression that means I don't know, but I'm sure. Mm. So <laughs> if you try to know where is the bus station, you say, I'm do I don't know, but I'm sure it oh. is on the right when oh. you turn. And it is on the right when you turn. Oh. So it's also interfere with how people are connected with what they know, what they don't know, are they sure that they know, and what tell them that they know or they don't know. And it's always about those frontier and the hybridity you find in this frontier. So what is the knowledge in our context and how important it could be or no. And uh, so finally, this is breathing out of school, our baby newly born. And uh, so you can find it on our platform as well on our website. And this is the, uh, uh, a very beautiful work from my colleagues, uh, for, of course, Koyoko, but also uh, Marie-Hélène, Dulcie, Eva, and they did an amazing work because it's a compilation of the five first academy. So we have texts from the people from the fellows, we have texts from the directors, we have texts from the observers, because every academy has an observer, someone coming just to, to, to see what is happening, how it is happening, and finding a way to share it with, uh, to, 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 to just tell us, okay, this is how it works, this is what I think about it, so that we can adjust as well. So it's a beautiful book, and uh, we are, we are, really, really excited about uh, his parishion and knowing that people will have it on their shelf. <laughs> and uh, finally, I, we, I just do a kind of anicroche on uh, this publication of Shimuranga. Uh, so the last Shimuranga chronique called Imagination Noire, uh, he published it in 2021, April, and it was part of a project with the Pompidou Center, but we, we didn't choose it because of that. Uh, this uh, publication is very important because it's a condensation and a kind of uh, uh, publication digest of all the imagination that nurture the Africa, the Francophone Africa, so the French speaking Africa. So all the figures like German Akoni, this woman uh, smoking, uh, who created this place called Ecole des Sables, 
and uh, she is a choreographer, a dancer, an amazing woman, and uh, she's still dancing, struggling, but she's still doing her thing and the, all those people who nurture our imagination, our spirits, our corpus, our curriculum, all these people who were not attached to our curriculum for many, many years and now they are and Imagination Noir give it even more accessible. You don't need to go to school to understand and to know who is Germaine Aconi, you have it all in a specific publication and you have connection with uh, you can see in there Jibril Job Mambeti. You can see there in 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 it uh, different Sharanta Job and all those different figures that are that are part of our imaginary and part of our corpus, our curriculum. So all these works they have done since the beginning in a certain way culminated in this publication, because it's not only about French speaking Africa, of course. I think that may, there is many more to come, but it's a beautiful way, I think, to end up this presentation because this is what we want. We want people to have access to whatever mm -hmm. exists so that they can build themselves, so that, mm -hmm. can, so that they can be people, complete people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. Brilliant. It was too long. <laughs> okay. oh, that was great. Yeah, and uh, just just as a, as a little note, uh, reminding people that uh, uh, Shimbureng is going to be talking about uh, the chronic and and, and oh, during yeah. the book fair. So just check up the program and then you see the times that uh, that that presentation is going to happen. And uh, yeah. yeah, I would like to invite you just to stay on the call after I say goodbye here, just for a little bit, Fatima. Would you like to? Thank you very much for this presentation. It was amazing, very informative and very, um, I don't know, I think the work is fantastic. I'm very uh, uh, curious to know even, oh, even more um, and maybe I'll be lucky enough to, to visit you someday. And, and, and the car. <laughs> come, come, come. And we have the Vienna running next year in wow, May 2000. Next year. Wow, that's amazing. It's, wow. uh, it's an invitation. <laughs> and yeah, and, uh, and I invited like uh, uh, everybody who was like uh, watching to take a look at uh, raw tables in the book fair and, and to take a look at their website. You can see the website, just it's rawmaterialcompany.org. Uh, to get uh, better acquainted. They have like a really good podcast that I listen to some episodes. And so, ah. and um, yeah, so th thank you so much, Fatima. And uh, and uh, I'll, I'll just stop the recording. Then we can just finalize our conversation uh, after I stop the recording. And, um, and thank and you for having me. Thanks for watching, everybody who's watching. <laughs>